So I went to the farmer's market. I'm here in Florida. And I wanted to get some really beautiful, glowing, gorgeous oranges so that I could paint them, right? I wanted to open them up and put that sunlight behind them and make them glow. And when I painted them, it eh, didn't go well. But then I saw this. I thought, how do I do that? How do I make an orange glow like that? How do I make the light really pop on a piece of fruit? How do I give it that, that sense of glow? <clears throat> How do I really make it feel realistic? So I had to reach out to this artist, Adam Plague, and get him on this show to show us how. Adam Plague, welcome to Art School Live. Hi, Eric. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. Hey, man, we're honored to have you because you have the secrets. You know how to make that fruit glow. And we want to learn today how to paint a glowing orange. So let's go ahead and get right started. All right. Sounds good. Well, uh, like, like Eric said, my name is Adam Clegg. And one of my passions is to paint these, these glowing citrus fruit. And what I have here is my, uh, my still life. When I set this up, what I did was I basically I have my still life in between myself and my light. So my light is coming from this direction. And on, on the opaque objects, like the shadowed side of this rose, for example, they're just they're darker. But when you shine the light through something that's translucent or semi-translucent, the color just explodes and you have this beautiful intensity of color. You can see it a little bit right here where there's some parts of the fruit that are transparent. Those parts are glowing with a more saturated reddish orange. And then the contrast to that are these little pithy areas that are more opaque. And so there's a beautiful contrast between the bright colors and the more subdued grays that uh, really bring out this glow. But I'm looking forward to sharing a few steps that I've learned uh, to really capture this effect. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. Oh man, I am so looking forward to this. So uh, this weekend, I painted, uh, I have a bird of paradise, you know, beautiful flower. And I decided to set up and paint that bird of paradise. And the light was coming in behind it, just like you said, that light source and that those leaves were glowing. And yet again, another failure on my part. I didn't <laughs> know how to make it glow. So I am so looking forward to having you on and going through this and teaching us how you do this. And it's just going to be really cool. So we're going to get started. It's Art School Live with Eric Rose. All right. Our guest today is Adam Clegg. Adam, take it away. Let's do this. All right. Thank you, Eric. So I'm going to switch over to my, my painting here. And, uh, you know, everybody notices the color right off the bat. They'll notice that intense, bright, saturated orange or red, depending on what kind of fruit you have. This is incidentally a caracara orange. So it tends to be in the reddish orange family. Like I was saying, everybody notices the color initially, but my first consideration is actually the value. It's how dark or how, how light that color is in comparison to the other colors in the scene. So I'm, I'm going to squint down, and that really is the key to these dark and lights, is look at your subject with your eyelids kind of halfway closed. That'll compress that range of lights and darks in your subject. It makes them much more easy to compare to each other. So that's what I'm gonna do on my subject. And I'm looking at my subject, I'm, I'm just kind of boiling down this one orange slice to one basic value. And I'm asking myself, what does that value look like uh, compared to the other values in the subject? So okay, I'm, I'm, the trans I'm, I'm gonna interrupt you here. I'm sorry, e <laughs> okay. So I'm your translator, uh, I'm your guide. And when you use terms that people might not know, I have to come in and go, hey, hey, tell us what that means, right? <laughs> okay. So Adam, tell everybody what a value is because there are people watching this who don't yet know how to paint. And when you say values, they're like, well, I have values, like I go to church, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I think you need to clarify. Okay, yes, my apologies. So uh, the value is how dark or how light a color is. So if you picture this not in color, but if you picture it in black and white, you would see shades of gray. And so when I'm talking about the value, I'm referring to how dark or how light 
this color is compared to the other dark lights in the scene. So does that make sense? Makes total sense. I just to make sure that that everybody knows. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, so I'm squinting down at my image here, and I'm asking myself, how dark or light is this object compared to the other uh, items in the scene? You know, it's certainly darker than this lightest light, and it's a little bit darker even than the shadow. So that's that might be kind of surprising because you look at the shadow of the white rose, and at least in the opaque part, it's closer to the shadow here. But uh, here it's just a little bit lighter. Um, and so I'm going to I'm going to go off of that. I'm going to try to mix a color that is a little bit lighter than the shadow underneath the orange, because that's what I'm observing. So All coming right. on over here to my palette, I, I do also need a very saturated color as well. So I'm just dipping right into my cadmium red light. It's a very, very vibrant color. I'm going to add a little bit of lemon. And if you're interested in knowing all the colors on my palette, I can I can share a link with Eric to a blog post where I list out all my colors. That way oh, it'll we'll, save time. I don't have to go over those here. Yeah, we'll put that in the uh, comments section. Okay, great. So this is my cad red light with just a little bit of lemon. And I'm just going to block all of this in with one basic color. And um, right away, we're going to get uh, some low effect because of the intensity of the color. And so this is really the second key for doing glow is that intensity of color. Now, sometimes it's yellow if you're painting a lemon or different types of grapefruit. Sometimes it's going to be more orangey, sometimes more reddish orange like today. And uh, But my first consideration, once again, is value. And so I squint down at my subject. And I try to, I'm trying to ask myself, does the, the relationship of value between this and that look about right compared to my reference photo? And I think it's pretty good. I've, I've gotten something that's just a little bit lighter, like uh, maybe one or two steps lighter than that cast shadow underneath the orange. So I think that value is going to work pretty good. If you don't get the value, if all you're thinking about is the color, then you're probably not going to capture that translucent look. Okay, tell everybody add, why you don't uh, why you don't lighten that up with white. Oh yeah, great. So um, white is really your coldest pigment on your palette. So if you add white to any color, it's going to cool that color. So that's why uh, you know I I had to learn early on. I didn't get this right off the bat, but any color lighter than your current mixture will lighten that color. So you don't always have to use white to lighten things. So uh, just now I'm adding some more yellow to lighten because it's going to make it lighter, but it's also going to keep it warmer. It's not going to cool down my color too much. And uh, when I say cool, uh, there's, there's a couple of different things to think about. But mainly, if I were just to add white, it's going to make it too gray. It's going to really gray down that color, and I want it to stay nice and saturated. Why don't so you uh, why don't you do an example? Why don't you add a little white into your mixture just so we can see the difference? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, so I'll just do it with my palette knife. So here's just my cad red light and my lemon. And then if I take a little bit of white and start mixing it, see how it goes? It just goes a lot more pink. And that's really not the color that I'm observing, and especially when I get quite a bit of white in there it's graying down the color quite a bit. So it doesn't have that rich potency that I'm looking for. There's other times when that's perfectly acceptable. If I'm painting a pink rose or something, then that's exactly the color I want. But for this, I want, to, I want it to stay nice and saturated in that orangey red family. So I'm just going a little bit lighter on the top of this orange slice. So it's, uh, it's a darker, slightly darker, more saturated color on the bottom. And then it gets into a little bit more of a yellowy orange near the top. And so another, another key is that I, I want to keep these values, everything within that slice, I want to keep them pretty similar. So yes, I've gone a little bit lighter, but not, not too much lighter, just a tiny little bit where the, you know, it's a wedge shape. So the bottom of the slice is thicker. And the top part is thinner. You know, we're just looking at the side view, so you don't really think about that. But there's more light that can get through on the top because it's a thinner shape as opposed to the, the base of that slice, which is thicker. So not quite as much light can go through, 
That's why the top of this is just a little bit lighter than the bottom. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to kind of ground the orange slice into the shadow. And so uh, if you'll notice in the reference photo, there's a little bit of that orange color transmitted into that shadow. So it's reflecting into it and it's, it's really cool. So I'm going to take my original color and I'm going to go a little bit darker here because I'm going into the shadow color now. And uh, I think I want something that's probably not quite as saturated because I'm painting the shadow underneath the orange, not the orange itself. So I'm adding a little bit of my permanent green light just to cut down on the saturation. So it's not quite such a strong color. And I'm going to come in right under here like that, um, just to show how the color of that orange slice is reflecting into the shadow. So I, I love stuff like that, effects that you, you know, sometimes you don't notice them until you look for them. And that can really, you know, give that sense of realism there. That I'm going to go a little bit darker right underneath the, uh, the orange slice. There's just a little bit of a shadow, and that's going to kind of give it an anchor so it really feels like feels like it's sitting on that flat ground surface. So coming back over here, um, why, don't I, why don't I grab a little bit of this color here, which is transparent oxide red. It's similar to a burnt sienna. And I'll tone that color down with maybe just a little bit of green. Now I might be getting a little bit too dark here, but let me test it out and see what it looks like. I'm just going to carve in right there, give it just a little bit of a shadow there. Helps to make it look like it's not floating, but it's actually sitting there on the on that surface. Well, the other thing that that does is by putting that dark in there, it automatically makes that light stand out even more. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, and it's giving, it's bringing more contrast to this area, which is also just a really eye-catching thing to draw your eye right here, you know. So yeah, definitely. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting a little bit more detailed. I mean, I've, I've got the thing locked in. And you notice I'm using a flat brush it, that goes to a pretty fine edge. It allowed me to do a little skinny shape there. And I kind of did some little vertical strokes. And that is starting to kind of show those little, um, those little pockets of pulp that are in there. I mean, I, I did that just to blend the, the reddish orange with the more yellowish color. But it's kind of already starting to show the texture of those little, um, those little pulpy things that are that are in the fruit. Um, but now let me let me get a little bit more detailed. Um, there's these part parts of the pith that are on top of the saturated orange color that are more gray. And I already have some of those on these guys right down here. They're more opaque. They're more whitish in color, and they're a wonderful contrast to. The brighter colors. In fact, uh, a lot of times I like painting those just as much as I enjoy painting the bright colors. So once again, everybody notices the really, really bright color, but just as important is to contrast those bright colors with the grayer colors. And they're not just a boring gray. They are, they are beautiful, beautiful colors. So when I'm looking at the rind uh, or that little bit of pith uh, right along the edge here, and there's a little bit right here where that, that might actually be a little seed as well. And right in here, it's not just a gray. It's like a, it's like an olive color. It's like a yellowy greenish gray. So I'm going to come back to my palette here and try to mix up that color. Um, once again, value is an important consideration. So I'm squinting down. I'm asking myself how dark or how light are those little pithy shapes compared to the glowing part of the flesh. And they're, they're really about the same value. So I'm going to start with, I think I'll start with some lemon and some green. This is my permanent green light. And then I'm going to add my cad red. And when you first look at the reference photo, these cooler parts of the pith on top, they, they seem like they're a very different color from the glowing red. And uh, you, you don't want to make them too different. So you don't just want to, like right now, I mentioned that they were kind of in the yellowy green family. You don't just want to do a straight yellow green. You want to have a good amount of the parent color in them or else it'll, it'll seem wrong. And so I'm adding my original cad red color to them. So it's still, it's still in that orangey red family, but I'm just going more yellowy green than that original color I was, I was mixing. 
So anyway, I hope, does that make sense, Eric? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So let's see if I'm just going to test out a little bit of this and, and go on top. Okay. So I think my, my value is pretty good. I, I want to push that even a little cooler. So I, I have a little bit more contrast. Like I said, I don't want to go too yellowy green, but just a little bit more I think is in order. So I'm going to add my permanent green light, a little bit of my cad yellow while still trying to retain some of that original orange color so it's not too much of a foreign color that I'm putting in there. All right, let me try that out. And we'll just come right in here. Okay, I like, I like the direction of that. It's very subtle, but it's going to give some really nice contrast against those really hot reddish orange colors and then i'll put that little bit of um, whatever that is the pith covering up a little seed i think is what it is and we have a little bit more of that here and like and like that okay that still needs some work but at least i've introduced that color and i can you know fine tune it as i go along here i see a little bit more of it right here as well and then you'll notice that uh, on the near the tip right here, the uh, the orange slice just gets a little bit darker. If you compare like this area right here to this part right here, it's just not as bright right there. It gets a little bit darker. So I want to try to show that. I don't know if it might be that um, par partially this glass vase right here might be blocking some of the light that's coming from this direction. That might be why this part seems like it's not having as much light shining through. But whatever the case is, I'm observing it, and I, I think it looks really cool. So I'd like to try to get that in. So coming back to my palette, I'm going to start out with my Cad Red Light and Lemon. So I've got my original mixture here, but then I just want to darken and cool it ever so slightly. And so I'm going to come up to, um, you know, I'm going to try this color here. This is Cad Red Light, and this is just Cadmium Red or Cadmium Red Medium. And it's just a little bit of a slightly cooler red. I'm going to see if this will do the trick. And if not, I'll jump up to my alizarin crimson, which is even a cooler red yet. But let's see what this looks like. You know, I might. Um, well, let's let's just try this. Don't do it. it. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> okay. I know what you were thinking. You could read my mind. I could see where your brush was going. You're like, oh, I might dip into that white. Oh yeah, you're. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. We'll we'll see. I might I might need to. I don't want to completely cover up the uh, nice intense color that I have here. So it would just be in that one portion. Let's see. I do need to, I do need to tone down the red a little bit. I'm going to go with my alizarin, and um, I am going to try just a touch of white. So we'll keep our fingers crossed here, Eric. Okay, everybody, fingers crossed. <laughs> Okay, and I, I toned down the red even further with some of that green. So it, it's still a really strong color. I mean, that's a really strong red compared to my Cad Red Light. However, it is a little darker and a little grayer than that. And that's pretty much what I'm observing right here. So I think if I just put a little bit of that right there and squinting down to see the value, I see that, that same color kind of creeping around the bottom like that. And so I think I'm pretty happy with that color, but now I just want to blend it into my original color. So I'm going to come back here, wipe off my brush really good, make it nice and clean. So I just want a nice clean brush to do this. And now I'm going to start blending between that slightly darker red and blending it into the more saturated orange, just like that. There we go. Now that I've done that, I can see that I should go a little bit darker with that greenish pith right there, maybe a little bit cooler as well. And so I'll come back to this little pile of color that I've got here. I'm going to I'm going to dip into my Viridian green. It's going to make it a little bit darker and a little bit cooler as well. 
Let me test out a little bit right here. That's looking, I think that's looking a little bit too dark. So I'm going to add just a touch of white. And let's try that again right there. Okay. Yeah, I, I love that contrast. I know I've already said it, but just that contrast between that green and the red. And over here, it's a little bit more yellowish, but it's still kind of in the green family. And uh, just that those cooler colors compared to that hot reddish orange is going to make the reddish orange seem even brighter because of the contrast. So that is another one of those important keys. Don't, uh, I mean, definitely get those saturated bright colors, but don't forget about those complementary cools that are really going to make the hot colors pop. So things that make color pot are contrast and and and, and uh, value contrast, right? Color contrast, in other words, yep. cool cool versus warm, and value mm -hmm. contrast, dark versus light. Exactly right. So the the first the first thing really is uh, is contrast. Exactly like you said, it's value contrast. So that's the first thing I think about is how dark or how light do these colors need to go. And then just like you said, uh, color contrast as well. So I'm basically using complementary colors, which would be colors on opposite sides of the color wheel. Uh, not because I'm you know, just making that up, but because those are actually the colors I'm seeing in the subject and, and uh, contrasting those hot reds with the greens is also making those hot oranges really pop. All right, well, I think what I wanna do next is I'm gonna get a really soft brush and this is called a comber. And you can kind of see how the hairs are sort of jagged. They're not, they're kind of splayed out a little bit. And if I'm careful, what I like to do is blend a little bit with this. Now I can, you can get to the point where you over blend and make everything kind of too soft and blend it out. But if I just do a few strokes here and there, Sometimes the, uh, the jagged hairs of the comber brush will leave these striations and it can sort of imply the little fibers in the fruit without actually having to paint each one. It kind of shows that effect sometimes. That's, I don't know if I'll be able to show it or not. I think I need actually a little more paint on my brush. Let me get that CAD red light again with my lemon. like that, and I'll just kind of do my brush in a way that makes those hairs splay out a little bit. I can even, I can even kind of do like, like this, so they're not clumped together too much. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's see if I can get it to work this time. There we go. Kind of see how it kind of put down the paint in a striated fashion. It just sort of implies those fibrous little pieces of pulp in there, I think. So I like to use that technique sometimes as I'm blending my edges. I'll just do a little bit of that over here, right there. I'm going to soften this edge here. Just kind of blend that saturated color down into the more grayish color underneath. Okay, so I'm, I'm pretty happy so far with, you know, this area around here. And the part that needs some work is right up in here. There's kind of like, a, it looks like a fin or a crest or something. The way that the uh, piece of uh, pulp is kind of curving, curving upward like that. So why don't I try to define that a little bit more? Actually, you know what, I'm gonna, I, I'll do that second. Before I do that, I'd really like to get this right here. This is, we're kind of seeing the, um, uh, the, the horizontal plane of the orange slice that's facing downward but it's got a lot of that white pith on it. And so it's not, it's actually a little bit lighter than this orange part right here. So I'm just talking about a little sliver of a shape right there that I'm going to try to get in. Are you using straight paint? There's a question. Are you using medium or not? No, I, uh, I really do not use medium when I paint uh, with just a few exceptions. So I have my Gamsol odorless mineral spirit right here. I'll just I'll use that not so much to thin my paint, but just to rinse my brushes in between colors so I don't cross contaminate my colors. But uh, I'm just using my paint in the consistency that they come straight out of the tube. Nothing wrong with using mediums, and that's certainly a valid way to work. But 
for me personally, I, uh, I just do it this way. Okay, but folks, if you're watching this for the first time, we're here every weekday at 12 noon. I should ask you guys to go to the comments. I want to know who's going to try this. Who's going to go to the store, buy an orange, and try this? I know I am. <laughs> How many takers? Hey, it's a it's a challenge, but it's really rewarding. It's a, it's a very beautiful subject, a very uh, very beautiful aspect of God's creation that I find very inspiring. Okay, so I'm just going a little bit uh, darker with this mixture, and you know, actually, I think I probably I probably have this value a little bit too dark. Yeah, because I was actually observing that this should be a little bit lighter, just because there's so much of this white pith on it. And uh, so I, I'm going to come in. I think I also need to make it a little bit more pinkish as well. So I'm adding a little bit of alizarin and some white. I actually need to go a little bit lighter than that really bright orangey red. Okay, I'm not quite there yet. Let's add a little bit more white. Tori says, I'm intimidated, but it's a great goal. Tori, go for it. Oh, you yes, go it. for it, Tori. Yeah, please do. Listen, the whole thing about this show is we're here to encourage everybody. I couldn't, well, I didn't believe I could paint when I first started painting because I thought you had to have natural talent. You don't. You just need to learn process. You can do this. Okay, well, I think I've gone a little bit too far. It's, I think it's the right idea. I've gone a little lighter and a little cooler, but that is a downward facing plane. And so it's, uh, it's facing away from the light. So I need it a little darker than that. So this was too dark, this was too light. I'm gonna mix them together and see if I can get it just right. And yes, please don't be intimidated to try this subject. It is difficult. It is a challenging subject. So if you don't get it on your first try, don't give up and don't get discouraged. Uh, keep working at it. If it's something that is, you know, uh, just, just an aspect that's really beautiful, that's inspiring to you, keep at it and you'll get it eventually. But these are the things that I find make it a little bit easier. If you can kind of break these concepts off into, into pieces, first think about the value, how dark or how light the color is, and I'm repeating myself, but uh, squinting down and asking how dark or how light are these colors compared to other colors in the scene? And then also using the color contrast of, of yes, doing the very saturated colors, but then don't forget the cooler, grayer colors of the pith as well. And those can really set off those bright reds and oranges. You know, and it's taken me several shots to get this value just right. So uh, that's just the nature of the game. So if you don't get it on the first try, don't let that discourage you at all. I need a little bit of my ground plane color again, which is a very light and cool color. And so I'm starting out with white, just adding a little bit of ultramarine blue and just a touch of alizarin because it's kind of a pale violet. And uh, let's see if what I, what I need to do is just bring that in and I'm kind of carving into that shape and giving a nice firm edge there, nice sharp edge. That's another great lesson, everybody. Carving in is a great way to get your edges crisp. Exactly, yeah, it is. And I'm using, uh, specifically, I'm using an ivory brush from Rosemary and Company. There's there's lots of different brands and types that'll that'll do this, but find a brush that'll go to a really nice edge, and then you can get those those sharp edges. If you're using an old brush where the hairs are just poofed out like that, it's going to be a great blending brush, but it it's not going to be good for getting those crisp edges. So I like the sharp edge on the bottom of the orange slice. I'm going to go a little bit softer here between light and shadow, though, because this the outer edge of that shadow needs to be super soft. So I'm, I'm going to mix up a transitional value between the light and then that dark part of the shadow. I'm trying to mix up a value or a shade that is kind of halfway in between, maybe something like that. And if I just introduce that color right here, that can start to soften that edge and make it not so crisp. We'll 
we'll do just a little bit more of that. I made it a little warmer just to put right in there. Oh, I got to go just a little darker. So a little bit more blue, a little bit more transparent oxide red. We're getting into the center of, uh, of the shadow, which is going to be a little on the warmer side. So that's why I'm introducing some browns. There we go. I'm going to come back into that darker shadow color here. And I just need to soften that dark shape that I put in there before. It was just a block in shape. So it was fairly hard edged and crisp. But now I'm trying to soften it out just a little bit. Okay. All right. So now that I have that, I'm going to, I'm going to come back to the top and just uh, refine that top edge along the, the orange slice there. So uh, first of all, we've got this kind of triangular shape right there that's catching a lot of the light. And it's when you squint down, it's really the same uh, value as that, as that ground plane around it. So it kind of just blends right into that. I'm gonna make it a, uh, a little different color though, just so that you can see it a little bit better. So I'm gonna make it the same value or the same lightness but I'm, I'm adding just a little bit of my lemon so that we can, we can tell that it's part of the orange slice and it goes right in here like that. And then we've got that little fin or whatever that's, that's popping up. And that is a, a pretty transparent piece. I'm squinting down at it and it goes, it goes lighter than that yellowy orange color that I've got right there. So if I come back to my yellowy orange color, which is right here, I'm gonna mix up something that is a similar color, but a little bit lighter because it's so thin, so papery thin that there's just even more light shining through it. Okay, and that goes right, right in here. And then it comes down in a little skinny, skinny uh, shape right, right through there. So this is something you need some, some little skinny brushes or something that'll go to a really fine edge, like I was mentioning. I'm gonna go just a touch darker with it so it stands out a little bit more right here. Okay, and I'm rinsing off my brush in the Gamsol. I'm gonna come back here to my light purple ground plane color. And I'm gonna come right in here just to clean up that shape, make it a little bit tidier in there. Like that, okay. Now we've got a little bit more of that kind of olive color. So I'm going to dip into that right here. And then coming back uh, on the left-hand edge of that little sail shape that's sticking up, it uh, gets just a little bit darker. So introducing those colors, those same olive colors there. And we've got a little ridge right there. So this is the part where I'm getting a little bit more detailed. I don't, I usually don't put in all the details, but it's amazing how just a few details here and there can imply to the eye that there's a lot more going on. So you don't necessarily have to paint every detail. Uh, for example, like I mentioned in the beginning, just those little kind of vertical slash strokes, like there, there, and there, just a few of those can imply all those little fibrous pulpy things that are in the flesh without actually having to paint each one. So I'm kind of trying to think along the same lines as I continue on this top ridge of the orange slice. trying to ask myself, how much do I really need and how much can I get away with just implying and not actually painting it literally? Nothing wrong with a more literal approach, but that's how I like to work in kind of a more impressionistic manner. I like to leave a little bit up to the viewer's imagination. So I'm bringing in a little bit more of that yellowy orange right there. And uh, I think 
I think I need a little payoff of a little bit of light right there behind the orange, kind of like what I have right here, but just go a little bit lighter on the ground plane um, right along that edge to separate the ground plane from that orange slice, just a, just a tad more. So I'm gonna pick this up here. And uh, you know, I probably need to go just a little bit darker with that. I'm gonna add just a touch more of my blue, a little bit of alizarin. So it's the same color as that really light one, but I'm going just a tad darker with it. And where I think it needs it is just right there. There we go. See how that establishes a nice little crisp edge right on the top of the orange slice. There we go. It just separates it from the ground plane behind it a little bit better, I think. Okay, I'm going to soften that edge. All right. Okay, so now I'm sort of sitting back in my chair asking myself, what, what does this need? I think I'd like to do a little bit more on this little tip right here. There's, there's a really cool um, uh, piece that sticks up like this. I, I called this a sail. That's what it reminds me of. And this kind of looks like the, uh, you know, the front piece on a ship. I forget what you call that. But it's like a little thing that's sticking up there. And uh, so I have the darker part. What's that? Like the bow? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Or sometimes they'll, it's the part where they'll put the, um, um, well, I'm going to show my ignorance here, but they'll, sometimes they'll put like the figurehead on the front and there's like a, oh yeah, it's not the mast, but it's like a part that sticks out of the front yeah. of a ship. That's what this reminds me of <laughs> right here. The point of the bow. Yeah, the point of, yeah, there you go. So I have the darker part on the, on the left and I'm just going to try to go a little bit lighter on the right of it to show that light and shadow form. Oops, I got a little bit too much Gamsol on my brush, so I made that a little bit soupy. I've got a part that doesn't have the Gamsol in it as much. I do you like that? And then uh, it goes a little bit more, um, it goes a little bit more yellowy green on the right-hand side and a little bit lighter. So I am adding a touch of white with some of my lemon and my Viridian. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good to my eye, but you never know until you try it out in your canvas. So I'm gonna put that on there. Okay, so we do have a bit of contrast between light and shadow there. Uh, I think it needs even a little bit more. Technically, this would be the reflected light. It's not, it's not receiving light directly from my light source. It's actually bouncing, the light is actually bouncing off of that uh, tablecloth up into this little part right here. And then I'm going to blend between the reflected light and that darker shadow on the left. Try to get a soft edge there. I'm going to go just a little darker, a little bit greener right in here. And then there's that really beautiful little fiber that kind of hangs down like that. Let's see if I can imply that like that. Okay. There's a little bit more light on top of that little shape that sticks up now. And on the very tip of it, it, it looks kind of like a stem that you'd find on an apple or something that's been broken off. Um, just on the very tip of it, it gets a little bit more yellowy and there's a little bit more light on it. So I'm just doing a mixture of lemon and a little bit of transparent oxide red here, maybe a little bit of white. And I just want to put that little tip right about there. There we go. Okay, so I think the last thing now that I need to do, I got that a little bit thick. So now I'm just going to take the uh, the lighter color and carve into that a bit more. And let's see, I need my real pale yellow color here. And I'm just going to 
carve into that shape to make it a little skinnier. And then I'm gonna come in with my light purple ground plane color again and do the same thing just to make that a bit more skinny right here. There we go. I'm just gonna modify a shape on the left. This part right here, I got the I got the shape a little bit uh, lackluster. It's a little bit kind of boring. And in the reference photo, this little tip curls up really nice. So I try to pay attention to those nice little nuances. And now I wanna just refine that shape a little bit and, and make that part curl up into a little nicer shape and a little bit more accurate to the reference. Okay. All right. How much time do I have left, Eric? You have all the time in the world or oh, 10 uh, minutes, yeah. whichever you prefer. <laughs> uh, sorry. What was that again? 10 minutes. Oh, okay. I've got plenty of time. Well, at this point, I've got the thing blocked in. I'm pretty happy with the shapes. I'm pretty happy with the effect of light and shadow. So, um, you know, I, I feel pretty good about the relationships of those darks and those lights in order to show light and three dimensional form and uh, and so forth. I d this is definitely now the strongest color in the subject. So I, I feel like that's pretty eye catching. And it's I, uh, for that reason, I think it's working okay as my center of interest. So now that I have all those things um, pretty well established, at least to my liking for now, uh, I'd like to move in and get a little bit more detail. And so maybe I could imply a few more of these little pieces of pulp and so forth and we'll, we'll see how this goes. So at this stage, I move into a little bit more detail. And let's see, I'm gonna clean up one shape on that little sail piece right here. Like that. And uh, you know, over here in the beginning, I put that little dark accent to kind of ground the slice of orange. And I think I need something similar over here. Uh, it kind of, I like the way that it blends into the shadow, but it's a little bit too much, I feel. And I'd like to have just maybe a little bit more separation right there so we can understand where the orange ends and the ground plane begins. That's not to say that I might not keep some lost edges in here, because I, I do like a lost edge. And if you're not familiar with that term, uh, the probably the place in the reference photo where it's the most evident is uh, if you, if again, if you squint down, you'll notice that this tone kind of blends right up into the orange. And particularly right here, it's hard to tell exactly where does the orange end and the tablecloth begin. So that's what you call a lost edge. Oh yeah, great. Yeah, you made it nice and big, that's good. So right, right through there is what you'd call a lost edge. So I like those, but I think I wanna have just a little bit more separation right there. And so I'm gonna reach into my transparent oxide red and I'm going to, I think I'm going to use some of my cadmium orange because it's a nice warm color. And then uh, I'll probably tone it down. Let's tone it down with some permanent green light. And this little, this little crevice right here is not as dark as this one over here, but if I get a little bit of that in there, there we go. Now I feel like it's grounded a little bit better. Now I'm going to do something. This is a cool. This is a cool trick. And I take a. Uh, let's see if it'll work though. Uh, I think it will. This is a, uh, a a big, soft mongoose hairbrush. And if you don't have one exactly like this, you could use uh, any really any kind of soft hairbrush, like a sable brush or something. And I make sure that it's nice and clean and dry, no paint or no mineral spirits on it. And there's, uh, there's some glare, particularly down here, that I don't want. And so light as a feather, I'm going to try to stroke vertically. And that will flatten the stroke, and it'll eliminate the glare. So I blended my paint a little bit more than I wanted, but it's not too bad. We got rid of the little bit of glare that we've got there. I'm going to try it over on this side, too. Yeah. 
you know, just like that. Okay, so uh, let's see, I'm sitting back in my chair again, I'm trying to analyze things. Uh, this is a really slight change, but I, it goes back to just trying to cut in underneath the orange slice and make it feel grounded. I think I need to take my ground plane color here and cut in a little bit over that way as well. So let me do that, and then I think that'll be the last main thing that I do there, and then I'll add in the remaining time just a couple more details. So coming back to here, um, that area of the ground plane is a little bit darker than what I was mixing before. It's also a little bit greener because the light is shining through. Oh, sorry, I meant to go, go to my palette. Uh, I'm talking about this area right here is a little bit darker than this. And it's also a little bit greener because the light's shining through that green glass vase. Right, it's reflecting. Yeah, exactly. And imparting some of that color down below. While you're on your palette, there's a question from Shauna Lee. What's the color between ultramarine blue and permanent green light? This one's Viridian. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see if I've got... Oh, that's a little bit too light. So I'll come back here and... We'll go a little darker with that Viridian green. And I'm just gonna carve into that just a little bit to bring it in. I just wanna bring that angle in at the bottom just a little bit. And uh, so I like, I like that, I like that edge. The thing I don't like is the bottom edge of that shape is too crisp. So I'm just gonna, let's see if this will work. I'm gonna wrap the end of my brush in a piece of paper towel and I'm just going to wipe the bottom all of the all of the paint underneath what I'm doing today has dried so I can do this and uh, now I've got this soft edge on the bottom that way hey you guys tell us where you're watching from and if you're new please say so we're here every weekday at 12 noon New York time I'm going to add just a few cools. In Here's the a question time. from Angie Woods. Would there be even the slightest reflection of warm from the fruit on the glass near the fruit? That's a great question. You know, um, I, I didn't I didn't see that. I didn't see any of that. Let's pull um, up the either... reference image. All right. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't see it either. Maybe, yes, in that dark, right beside that spot of white, in that dark on the bottom of the vase, there's a little bit of orange in there. Yeah, yeah, I see that. I see, yeah. Uh, so that would be my, I've altered my drawing a little bit, so the dark that you saw above. No, and, and underneath the vase, in the, in the dark where the, uh, under the base of the vase, the, the dark there, there would be a little orange in there. Oh, right in here? Right in there, yeah. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe According so. According to the reference photo. Yeah. Huh. Wow. That's very subtle. I hadn't noticed that. Well, I might. I might have to put that in. We'll. We'll see. <laughs> I want to focus mainly on the uh, on the orange slice though, just to show you kind of the full the full picture on that. But that's a great observation. I love it. Well, somebody, well, I mean, you don't need to do do what we say. <laughs> just do, yeah, okay. do what you want. Hey, if I had a little bit more time, I would. I'm going to go a little bit lighter, a little bit cooler right there. Um, that pith kind of goes more, more cool purplish right there. So I wanted to show that. And then I'm just going to add a few more of those little greenish kind of olivey cools. Right, right in here. And this will be kind of the little payoff. And it's so cool when you when you put the once again, the contrast of the cools against those hot oranges, how man, there's just like a, I don't know how to describe it, but this kind of scintillating uh, color contrast that's really beautiful. Once again, a little bit goes a long way. You don't need too much of this. 
In Hello, the United Kingdom. Hello, Morocco. Oh, cool. Hello, France. Hello, Italy. That's fantastic. We got the whole the whole world is watching. Yeah, well, you draw them in, baby. You draw them in. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that. A lot of people watch Art School Live. I'm honored to be here. We're honored to have you. Thank you. Our goal is to help people realize that anybody can learn to paint, even if they don't believe they can. I'm just doing some kind of little slashy strokes with the sharp edge of my brush. I'm just using a, a flat bristle brush that's fairly new, so the hairs haven't started splaying out yet. And that allows me to get the little, they look like little veins going through, but they're the little, um, the, the little skinny areas in between each of those little uh, vesicles of juice that are in there. Hello, Marcus in Tyrol, Austria. Wow. All right, cool. All right Marcus. See, they start coming out when I start mentioning them verbally. Everybody starts doing it. <laughs> I'm drying off my brush really good. I just kind of squeeze it in a dry part of my paper towel um, because I, I rinsed it in my Gamsol. But for this next step, I don't want any, any mineral spirits in there. And I'm just, again, I've got my Comer brush that you can see how the hairs are kind of jagged and splaying out a little bit. And this is the one I like to use to just kind of soften what I've done here. And it kind of implies the texture a little bit better. And I might get some of that cooler color actually on this brush like that. And just imply a little bit of detail over top of that hot red. Like that. All right. So I think I'm done fiddling around with these little details, uh, at least at least those details. And uh, what I notice is that uh, the little seed right here is kind of rounded, and it's cooler on the bottom and warmer on the top. So if you notice, like on the uh, kind of the upper left, it's more of an olive yellowy color, which that's the color I already have. But then on the bottom, it's a little bit cooler. I wonder if it's because it's kind of spherical if it's catching some of the reflected light that's bouncing off of that white tablecloth, kind of, it's more similar to like this color right here, except it's a little bit bluer. So let's see if I can get that little color contrast in there. And this is my original color that I used, and I'm just gonna go a little bit lighter and a little cooler with this. And it's like a greenish blue, so I'll add a little bit of Viridian and Ultramarine, a little bit of white, I don't want to go too gray though, so maybe I'll add back in just a touch of orange. Okay, I need to go, I think the color's pretty good. It's it's cool like I wanted, but I want to go a little bit lighter. Uh, maybe I'll lighten with a little bit of lemon so it doesn't get too cool as I lighten it. A little bit of green. Okay, so now by introducing that cool, we've got the warm and the cool, and it gives a really nice color contrast and starts to show that that little shape or that seed or whatever it is, is a little bit more spherical. I'm gonna go just a touch lighter with it. Okay, there, I like that color better. Kind of got rid of my nice warmer color though, so let me reestablish that. There. Okay, well that's that's pretty much it, I think, uh, I think Eric. Ta-da! All right. You guys enjoyed that. Give him a thumbs up or applause or something in the uh, comments. We'd appreciate that. 
Adam, thank you so much for being here today. Hey, it was my pleasure. Thank you very much, Eric. Glad to have you, and uh, we'll have you back. This was really terrific. Thanks, Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Clegg. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Nice, nice job. Okay. I want to tell you guys about a couple of things. If you want to just hang in there a little bit, uh, I'm restructuring this program a little in case you've noticed. I'm, I'm not trying to interrupt the artist as much with the, uh, with the uh, commercials and all the, all that stuff. But there are a couple of things I want to tell you about. First off, Plan Air Convention is just around the corner in May. And uh, I haven't checked the seating yet today, but there were just a few seats left when I last looked. And uh, we have, it's a big, big hall. You know, we've got a big stage with a, a big screen TV so you can see every detail. We have people who work with you in the street. And, and when we go out painting, the people in the bright colored hats help you. We have uh, side rooms. We have five different stages and a lot going on. So, and, and this year we have uh, more pre-convention workshops than we've ever had. We have a a, a beginner's plein air. Somebody was just in the comments saying, hey, I don't paint plein air, and that's okay. If you want to learn it, uh, go to the plein air convention, go to the plein air basics course the morning it starts. Uh, that's with Carrie Curran and several other artists teaching that, and they take you through all the basics you need to know, and then they'll stick with you the entire week uh, and coach you through the entire week if you want that. When we go out painting, the last day of the week, we're painting the Biltmore Estate in Asheville, which is really cool. Uh, we have a great workshop from, uh, let's see, we'll start out with Aaron Schur in Pastel. If you're Pastel and you're coming, you need to go. Uh, we have Amit Kapoor from India, the great watercolorist, a legend. He's going to be teaching watercolor at the convention uh, and a pre-convention workshop. And then, of course, we have Joe Paquette, who is going to be doing an oil workshop. And he, he uh, did something the other day about starts and the importance of starts. And I think it was really worth seeing. And so I'm just going to show this for you real quickly. Well, I showed you the wrong promo, but oh well, I'm not going to show you another one. <laughs> uh, I am going to return Art Marketing Boot Camp to the Plein Air Convention. I didn't do it last year, and I got a lot of complaints about that, so it's coming back. But nobody wants to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning for that. I mean, even though we had uh, a packed room every morning, I don't want to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. So we're going to do lunch and learns. So you can grab your lunch and come in, and then we'll do Art Marketing Boot Camp during lunchtime if you want. You don't have to, but we'll do that a couple of days at the Plein Air Convention so that you can work on selling your art if that's important to you. Okay, well, thanks again to Adam Clegg. It was fabulous. We learned about glowing oranges, and I think you guys need to try this at home. It's really a valuable thing to try. And if you don't try, if you're intimidated by it, how are you going to learn it? You got to get out there and try these things, right? All right. Thanks again to Adam, and thank you for tuning in. Our goal here is to let everybody understand that painting can be learned. It's, you know, 
when I was starting to paint, it seemed so difficult and complicated. I guarantee you that if you just watch five of these in a row, all of a sudden things that seem like foreign concepts will begin to come together and gel. And if you watch since we began, I mean, all of the hundreds of them, you're going to figure it out. Then we have all kinds of other resources for you when the time comes for you to take it to the next level. All right. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Plen Air Magazine and Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine, among other things. Thanks for tuning in today. Remember, keep your head in the game.